You're listening to Thunder Quack Podcast Network. Welcome back to the Thunderquack Podcast, the official podcast of Thunderquack.com. I am your host, Michael Cohen, and with me, as always, the incorrigible Joe Hogan. Finally, a title I can get behind. How you doing, yeah. man? You know, I, I I couldn't I couldn't get it a second ago, and uh, <laughs> and then I was like, man, I, what are these other words coming? And and uh, and I said incorrigible, and you were like, I like that. So it's, I, you know what? I'm You'll all be one- on board. You can be one thing on on the Star Wars stuff because it is a <laughs> Jabba the Hutt reference. Okay, but yeah. on the Thunderquack podcast, you can be the incorrigible. I love it, Joe Hogan. I'm, uh, I'm all in. I'm all in. We are we are back. Uh, it is February. Um, this is we are we are recording on February fifth. It is a Monday morning, and um, we got some awesome stuff to talk about. But before we get into the geeky news that we want to break down. Um, I want to talk about what's going on at Thunderquack right now this month, and that is the Thunderquack uh, pledge drive. So um, we've got our Patreon, right? Patreon.com slash Thunderquack, where you can get early access to podcasts. You can get exclusive stuff um, like Off the Record and uh, Pop Quiz uh, for Perfect 10, and uh, and you can get access to our, our special members-only Discord. A bunch of cool stuff over there. Um, this month we are like going to hit it heavy. We're, we're, we're pushing it. Go check out patreon.com slash thunderquack. We have bonus episodes, bonus content for every single active podcast on the network. Can't say every podcast on the network. Cause we have a whole bunch that are like retired, but I, uh, but for every single podcast that is actively recording right now, we have bonus content coming out in the month of February um, and then on, on top of that, we have a bunch of goals, milestones that we're trying to hit, um, on the Patreon, uh, so pledges per month. And when we do, we've got rewards that we're going to, that we're going to deliver for those milestones. So, um, just really quickly, I'm going to go through the bonuses and then I'm going to go through the goals and the rewards. Um, so the bonus content right now, already, as we record this, uh, you can get Perfect Ten, Star Wars, A New Hope with Amanda Konkin, uh, my my co-host from Quiver, the Green Arrow podcast, We and former co-host of, of this podcast, the Thunderquack podcast. Uh, we sat down last night and we did about two hours talking about uh, Star Wars, A New Hope, and that is a Patreon exclusive. So if you listen to uh, Perfect Ten and, and you've been wondering how come Mike hasn't talked about Star Wars, um, we talk about it on the, on the episode, but I, I was basically like avoiding it. I was like, uh, no, it's what everybody expects me to do. But, uh, <laughs> but since people have been asking for it, there it is. It's, it's on Patreon. It's the exclusive it's up right now. Um, after we finish recording this, I have to finish up the album art and a little bit of the other stuff. And then I'll be posting, um, the Epic Marvel podcast, watch along earth's mightiest heroes, episode one an iron man is born. So this is, uh, uh Curtis Finley from epic marvel podcast has done uh, uh basically a commentary like a running commentary along the first episode of earth's mightiest heroes the the avengers animated series um at which you can watch on disney plus so you queue it up on disney plus you watch it along with him um and curtis knows this marvel stuff backwards and forwards like he is and i'm talking like old school stuff i don't mean like he's like an mcu nerd like like i am he he does like the mcu but he is He's, he's, uh, he's like an old man. Like, it's like, like, uh, like if you were to talk to Steve Rogers, uh, he, he knows <laughs> the comics from like the 1960s all the way forward. So, um, so his insight and stuff is, is unparalleled, I think. Um, so definitely go check that out, um, on patreon.com slash thunderquack coming next week. We've got the bonus episode for thunderquack podcast. 
which will be our Pokemon ranked episode. Joe and I are going to rank all 151 of the original Gen 1 Pokemon. Um, some say that this is a fool's errand, and <laughs> I and and others ask why are you doing this. Uh, to which I say you got to catch them all, and and you know that requires ranking them. I, I I can't explain why we need to rank the Pokemon. I just know that it's something that you and I have to do. Yeah, um, like there's no question. This yeah, is it, important. Exactly. Exactly. It's important. This is the Lord's work. And uh, <laughs> I, I, we're going to we're going to do that. That'll be up next week, next Monday, um, alongside Perfect Ten Pop Quiz uh, for Star Wars A New Hope. So uh, that, that that's that's the, the bonus um, pop quiz to accompany that bonus Perfect Ten episode. And then the week after that, we'll have Rebel Cells Young Jedi Adventures. Uh, I, I, I said a year ago that I was going to do this and we never did. Um, but uh, Kara has agreed and Cassie has kind of shrugged um, I, and, and they're both going to join me on an episode. Where we're going to talk about the, the Disney plus uh, Disney junior uh, show uh, young Jedi adventures over on rebel cells. So that Kara is super excited to talk about it. Um, uh, so I'm super one's... excited to hear it from her point of view, because yeah, like, if... I have no opinion on that. Uh, I am more interested in what her opinion is on on that show so that's, for sure that's pretty absolutely cool. yeah yeah so i it, it's i think it's going to be a good one it's going to be a good one we haven't recorded it yet because we're we're just finishing up the last batch of episodes i think we've got like one or two left and then we're and then we're going to talk about it but cool. uh yeah it's going to be a good one and then uh star wars the saga continues is is uh putting on an episode journey to middle earth this is a new sort of side series that that tim and kyle are going to do where they talk about things other than star wars so they're going to take some sort of side quests um and uh and and they're starting with the best side quest of all uh which is uh lord of the rings so that's going to be a good one because both of them are huge lord of the rings fans um so eventually i'll probably have kyle on perfect 10 to to do a lord of the rings episode because he's he's such a big fan um and both in terms of scope as well as his size because he's just he's very very tall i i and then the following week on February 26th to close it out, we've got Force Perspectives. And it's a like we're not ready to talk about it yet. We're Joe and I are working on something and I uh, will let you guys know when there's something to know. But I, uh, you know, like what we're working on is big. And if it doesn't work out, then we'll come up with something that is also awesome and we won't tell you and you'll have no idea. <laughs> yeah, and you'll have never missed it. Yeah, but um, but but if but if we can pull it off, I think it'll be a, a really fun episode and a really great yeah. bonus. I'm, um, I'm very hopeful. Yeah, and then uh, and then the Wampas Lair. Uh, Jason is is also launching a new sort of side series uh, uh, to the Wampas Lair, which is the Wampas Lair Spotlight, and he's starting off with Shmi Skywalker. So, um, with Spotlight, he's gonna sort of grab something specific, probably most likely a character um and 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 sort of do a deep dive in a mini episode on that character and he's starting off with with one of i think the most underrated characters in the saga uh with shmi skywalker so really cool really cool that he's doing that i'm really excited to hear what he puts together for that and then uh closing it out is off the record which is uh the patreon exclusive podcast we i don't release it anywhere else it's only on patreon and that's my solo podcast that i do um, and this one's going to be listener's choice. So uh, the patrons are going to be able to choose later today. Actually, I'll put up on Patreon um, a poll with a few choices uh, for the topics that, that I'll that I'll discuss on that episode. And uh, and yeah, so everybody who's on Patreon will be able to vote on that. And then and then I will record an off the record on on those topics and and it'll be a wrap-up of the pledge drive and everything like that but um but yeah that's uh so that's that's all the bonus content that's coming i uh, so that's what you guys get for pledging th in this month um for five bucks over on patreon.com slash thunderquack but uh, the 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 real aim here are are these milestones that we're trying to hit these goals 
um, and each goal uh, comes with a reward. So um, if we can hit $250 a month, then I'm going to start doing a podcast called Perfect 10 Minutes, which will be sort of like a, 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 a sister podcast to, to Perfect 10, um, where I will do like these sort of scripted 10 minute uh, summary Perfect 10. So I, I, I've written about five of them already. Um, so they'll be a little bit more produced. They're scripted. So less of like our sort of, you know, regular conversational sort of thing. Um, but, uh, but with the scripting, there's like, there'll be like audio cues and stuff like that. So, uh, this is, this is the first one. Cause I really want to do this 250, I think is very reasonable. I think that we can hit it by the end of the month. Um, and, uh, and, and so I can start doing these, these episodes, uh, on a, on a regular basis over on the perfect 10 feed. Um, and then at 275 a month, uh, Curtis and I will return to Disney dad's cartoon afternoon to finish DuckTales season two. We stopped halfway through the season and never went back to it. Um, and people have been asking, when are you guys going to finish DuckTales? When are you guys going to finish it? Like, are you ever going to come back? Are you going to do gargoyles? Um, so this is the way to get us to do it is if, is if we can get up to 275, we will come back and we will finish season two of DuckTales at $300 a month. Um, we will do a second round of exclusive bonus episodes. So at all of those shows that I just mentioned, you'll get a second round of those at some point in, in the year, at some point in 2024, we'll come back and we'll do another round of bonuses. Uh, and then at 325, Curtis and I will come back and do season three of DuckTales as well, which will finish off DuckTales. And then, and then who knows what cartoon afternoon we'll do after that. Uh, but, uh, but you know, if, if you guys incentivize us enough, right, then we'll, uh, we'll keep it going. But, uh, 350. Now this is, this is the big one. Okay. This is, it's, it's, <laughs> it's far off, but if we can hit this, uh, we are going to grace you with, uh, the, the, the beautiful visages of myself and Joe <laughs> on both the Thunder Quack podcast and Force Perspectives will have video content, so it'll go up on YouTube, um, and uh, and yeah, we'll, we'll we'll be on video. Uh, uh, I mean, maybe even we'll figure out how to do it live and do Twitch and YouTube and all of that sort of thing. Wouldn't that be ridiculous? Almost like it's the year twenty twenty four, and that's what people do. <laughs> uh, that's what content creators do. So if we if we can hit that. The reason why that's up there is that in order to do that, I feel like uh, Joe and I probably need slightly nicer setups because uh, <laughs> I have a webcam and it's fine, like, but it's the one that's like built into my laptop. It's fine. It's fine. It's enough. But, uh, but yeah, if we're going to do it, we want to do it properly. So that's where we need your guys' support. Get us up to that. And then we'll be able to invest in, uh, in a little bit of equipment and, uh, and, 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 and we got it. You got to get like LEDs for your background, right? Like that's, you can't be on YouTube <laughs> without having like a color changing LED uh, wall in your background, right. To, to show off your, uh, your collection of nerdy stuff. But uh, yeah, that's, that's everything that we've got on there right now. I uh, theoretically, if we were to, to hit $350, I, I like, if we start getting close, I'll come up with some more rewards. But uh, I think that it, I think we're pretty ambitiously set at the moment as it is. But uh, yeah, if you're listening to this and and you've sort of been on the fence about supporting on Patreon, um, now is the time. This is the best time. And and the pro tip is to do an annual subscription. So when you do an annual subscription, you save. I think it's ten percent. So instead of it being sixty dollars uh, for the year, it's fifty four. Um, and then, and then you've, you've done it like it's done and, and you don't have to think about it until next year again. And, uh, yeah, uh, it's, uh, it would be hugely helpful, especially when I talk about like, like us, us doing something like getting some, uh, equipment and stuff. Uh, those doing the annual subscriptions is so much more helpful because it puts money into the bank account right away sort of thing. Um, and if we like, and the other part of it is that then I can switch a bunch of our, of our uh, costs and stuff like that over from monthly, which is, we pay everything kind of monthly right now. But if I can switch them over to annual, we'll, we'll save a chunk of money as well, which means that that money will go even further. We'll be able to do more of it. So 
Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's that's the 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 rundown. That's the skinny. That's the four one one on the Thunder Quack Pledge Drive. Um, like I said, the the Perfect Ten episode is out right now. I posted it last night at about one thirty in the morning. I think uh, I I after a minute I finished recording and then I had to do all of the the album artwork and and uh, write up and whatever and do the posting, but it's there um and uh yeah that's i'm i'm it's a it's a really good episode it is not a typical perfect 10 but that's because it's amanda and i and so we go off on a bunch of ridiculous tangents um but i mean uh, that does kind of sound like a regular episode to me but (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. um i talked a lot in it i talked like for 90 percent of it and amanda was just kind of there um again uh, this sounds pretty normal to me man <laughs> uh, a perfect 10 i try and let the guests speak more and like like i try and like prompt them and like sit back and listen but i i but this is the thing this is the thing with like you and amanda you guys are such good co-hosts because you just let me go like you just you just let me let me go on a rip but um andy richter yeah. is at his best when he's encouraging conan i feel it's, this is this is true i yeah. Uh, yeah so there it is uh, patreon.com slash thunderquack it would be so rad if you guys went over there and pledged your support um, if you're already a patreon supporter thank you um, it means so much to us and we couldn't do it without you uh, it doesn't it's not free to do podcasts especially not sort of on the scale that that we do thunderquack where we've got all of these shows that are all kind of bankrolled by the one patreon so um, it really means a lot I, I, that, that those of you who contribute that you do um but i i i really want to like take this all sort of to the next level and i want to start putting out even more content um and i i i'll probably talk about this more later in the month on some of the other podcasts as i sort of figure out what i'm doing but um but uh, here's a hint i'm still unemployed (laughs) and uh and my and my severance is starting to run out so Mm. um I'm trying to figure out what to do next and, uh, and, and it's rough out there in the job market. So I, uh, so yeah, I, this pledge drive, if we can kind of get it to a certain level might be what I need in order to, to, it's kind of like exponential, right? If we can sort of hit that benchmark, especially if we can get that up to 350, then, um, then I can start doing some other stuff. I can start investing in some other stuff and then, and then we can kind of, crank it up even more so um i hope that they you know what we've been doing thus far with this podcast um and and with force perspectives and and perfect 10 as well as everybody else who's part of the network um is enough to warrant what we what what we're asking for on patreon but um but really like I, I I sort of I had to have like a like a a moment with myself and this is like back in December where I was looking at it and I was like man like the the numbers on Patreon have been going down. It's really funny though cuz I look at it and and the um the earnings have stayed almost level at, even as like uh, patrons have gone up and down which which is interesting and that's just I think like where we've sort of found the the sweet spot in the rewards that we're offering and um and the, and the pledge levels, like the tiers. So it's now where it's just $5. I've gotten rid of all of like so the sort of complicated, like at $1, you get this at $5, you get this, right? Like that stuff kind of drives me nuts with, with, um, you know, you go to a Kickstarter and they've got like 15 tiers and it's like, well, with this one, you get a t-shirt. This one, you get a t-shirt at a pin with this one. You just get the pin, but you can get a digital download for an iron on for a t-shirt. <laughs> and it's like, I, but how, like, what's the thing that you guys are selling though? Right. It's like, I just want to back your role-playing game. <laughs> like, can I please just get a PDF of it? Yeah. I, I, so having been frustrated by that stuff and as well as other, other Patreons that I support, um, just with like, well, I want that. I want these things. I want the, these, these rewards, but you know, sometimes they put, you know, one of the things that I learned from, from, from one of the Patreons that I, that I support kind of funny, uh, uh, Greg Miller and those guys. Um, and this was actually something that, that Tim Gettys said to me in person. He was like, cause I was telling him about our Patreon 
Um, Because the funny thing is that we launched ours on the same day that they launched theirs (laughs) uh, nine years ago, right? I, I, so we have the same anniversary every year. And uh, so when they came and did a meeting, meet and greet in 2019, I was talking to them. I was saying, oh, I do this. And it's, you know, like I, I kind of, I like, like I look at you guys as like the benchmark, as like the gold standard. So we copy a lot of what you do. And he's like, he was like, awesome like he was so so happy to hear that he was like that's 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 rad like if you see what we're doing and you think that that can work for you or like you want to do the same thing then like yeah like we don't own it like like yeah you want to do in review like do your own version of in review you got you want to do this that um we were talking to the patreon and he was like the the biggest thing that he learned is that you take your best content the best thing that everybody wants you put that at your your cheapest tier right um and the, and so I had done that a while ago. We put everything like the best stuff on the one dollar tier, but then like over the course of the last year, I was like, man, like I get, we're doing all this awesome stuff at the ten dollar level, and nobody can listen to it because there's only like this many people at the ten dollar level. It sucks. So I was like, what if we just did everything? What if like we got rid of the one dollar, we got rid of the ten dollar, and everything above that, we just had five bucks a month, and everybody gets everything. Like all rewards are for everyone. You're just, you're a member. That's it. Um, so I did that. And then hilariously, that's what they did this year on kind of funny day uh, on January 5th when, when they, when they, you know, which is when they usually sort of like shift stuff around. They did the same thing where they, they reduced it down to like, like sort of like they have more than one tier, but like they put almost everything on, on the kind of funny membership uh, level which I, I was like, huh, that's, I got there first. Uh, <laughs> but uh, they have like sponsorship stuff and, and that sort of thing that they also do. So then they can justify it. I don't know. I don't know if anybody wants to, but if you do want to sponsor the Thunder Quack podcast, hit me up, let me know. <laughs> but I, but yeah, I, I, so that I, it's just funny how that works out where it's like, I, I was copying them and then I, I actually got there first on the, reducing it you know putting everything on one tier sort of thing um but yeah i hope that all of that you know makes it more enticing and and makes it a better value for everybody but more important than that it was just we were making this content and it was going out to to the 10 and 20 dollar patrons of which there were significantly less than the one dollar patrons right and uh and i was like that's this doesn't make any sense because like we're keeping all the good stuff to ourselves. Like that's not the point of making this stuff. We want people to hear it. So um, yeah. And these bonus episodes are going to be awesome. So I think that everybody should go. And even if you just, even if you just like pledge for a month just to check it out, uh, five bucks, you know, I, I, it would, it would actually, you know, make a big difference. Um, Cause all that kind of just goes in and then, and then we can use it for all sorts of things. So Okay, that's it. I'm done. That's enough. That's enough of me talking about the pledge drive. Uh, cuz everybody's going to get sick of it cuz I'm going to be talking about it all. If you listen to all of the podcasts, you're going to you're going to end up hearing a bunch of this spiel over and over again. But um if you do, like when you tune into Force Perspectives, I uh, I at the end of the month cuz we'll have We'll have a, a regular episode at the end of the month. Uh, you, you'll be able to skip over a bunch of this. Actually, by, by the end of the month, we'll probably just be talking about sort of how it went. But um, yeah, anyways, uh, you want to get into talking about some some geeky news? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's do the easy one first. Let's do that. Even though it's, it's sort of we're going to go in reverse order because we're going to talk about two things. Okay. Uh, we're going to talk about Sonic. We're going to talk about Ghostbusters. So let's leave Ghostbusters for last because I think that we'll have a lot to say because there's two oh, yeah. very big, very exciting oh, yeah. trailers that we just got. But the other piece of news that we got uh, just last week, just on Friday, actually. So this is actually like pretty fresh um, is I, I Sonic the Hedgehog 3, which we already knew is coming this December. Um, big, big news about the cast. Not the news we're waiting for yet. We're still waiting to find out <laughs> if our boy Hayden is is voicing Shadow, but uh, that's the rumor. So you know, we're, I'm I'm guessing trailer is when we'll find out. It it'll it'll be sort of revealed alongside sure. that. 
but uh, but we did get confirmation of the returning cast. So all of the the folks that you expect, um, Ben Schwartz, Ali Majoub, Idris Elba, Colleen O'Shaughnessy, uh, Tom Butler, James Marsden, Tika Sumter, all coming back um, uh, from Sonic 1, Sonic 2. Um, the, the, the big piece of news here is that Jim Carrey is returning as Dr. Robotnik, which after Sonic two, he said he was done. Um, cause he's kind of, he's kind of been threatening for a little while. He's just kind of going to retire from acting. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and he really hasn't done very much other than these Sonic movies <laughs> in the last little while. Uh, but I don't know. I think Paramount probably backed up the truck and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> just dump the cash on his on his front lawn and and uh uh you know i don't think it probably took a lot though to to convince him to come back because he has so much fun in this role i mean like like there's a lot about these sonic movies to be excited about and to enjoy but i really feel like if you don't have jim carrey in that role that it's 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 gonna kind of fall a little bit flat i i just don't know who else could deliver this character on this level um because you need you need a human being that is ridiculous enough to play opposite a, a blue hedgehog that goes real real fast <laughs> um but it's got to be something like that th- there are a lot of actors out there that um co- comedic actors that do crazy absurd things but there are very few of them that take it as seriously as Jim Carrey. I think yeah. like the only other actor that I think could have fit into this role and pulled this off would have been like Robin Williams. Right. Like I think, mm. I think he, he could have done it too, but um, as a matter of fact, I think he would have been amazing. Like I can picture him with the mustache oh, and the he goggles would have nailed it. And, yeah. and he probably would, he probably would have gone like the fat suit route, like of like getting, getting the yeah. belly sort of thing. Yeah. Um, being Eggman, but, um, but Jim Carrey does his own thing with Robotnik that is like unique to, uh, to the movie version that I absolutely adore. Um, and, and with, with his, uh, with his, his snively, uh, counterpart with Lima Jube's agent stone, um, I it just yeah I the, the the two of them have such great chemistry as as the 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 big bad guy and his and his little lackey um I love it so much and uh and, but then the rest of this cat like it we're just it's ridiculous we're so blessed already with this whole cast and then we've got some awesome actors joining for Sonic 3 uh we've got Kristen Ritter I uh, who people would know from like Jessica Jones and Don't Trust the Bee in Apartment Twenty Three and and Breaking Bad, right? All sorts of things. Um, so her coming like that's exciting. The rumor is that she's voicing Rouge the Bat, which would be oh okay something that would be something else. Um, but I could see it. I could see it. I I and then we've got uh, uh Cristo Fernandez from uh Ted Lasso, I I and uh, the post credit scene in um. Uh, no way home. Uh, <laughs> he's the bartender talking to to uh, Eddie Brock slash Venom. Ah, okay. Um, yeah, I uh, uh, Alila Brown, who I don't really know. I get she's been in a few things, um, so she's she's fairly well known. But she, uh, obviously, she will be playing Maria and and is gonna get sh- shot, uh, turning s- shadow into the uh, uh, a- anti hero that we all. Uh, love the the broody uh early 2000s uh, archetype um so they're gonna shoot this girl in the movie uh, i i she, she can get shot with a gun in a sonic movie uh and i don't know they'll probably adapt it they will probably change that i don't think that she'll just get shot um uh, sonic adventure 2 is a wild game you guys i i and then we've got uh yorma tacone one of the members of lonely island Coming in, uh, Sophia uh, per- Pernas, per- Pernas. I don't know how to pronounce her last name, but uh, and James Wolk. So I, yeah, I mean, the 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 cast was already incredible, right? Um, with with James Marsden and Ben Schwartz uh, and Idris Elba, right? Like just such such great uh, voices for the characters um, already. 
and uh, and and James Marsden really anchoring a lot of the the comedy, especially in the first one. I mean, like that's the other part. You got Jim Carrey as the bad guy. If you don't have James Marsden, the the I don't know if you've ever seen the concept art, but they originally wanted. Can you guess? Do you know? I I don't know where you're going with this. I have no idea. So for the human the human character, right? Like the 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 cop that hangs out with Sonic. Oh, Chris Can you Pratt. Guess? Yeah, yeah. They wanted really? Chris Pratt. It was yeah. Chris Pratt. It's always Chris Pratt. It's always Chris Pratt, right? If, if and Shadow is Chris Pratt, I am not <laughs> even. I'm gonna be like, yeah, I figured. Um, I think that the 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 filmmakers for this first first off, I don't think they can afford Chris Pratt. Um, <laughs> I, I think that, that that's the reason why good wasn't part of it good. to begin with and why they ended up with James Marsden. Cause James Marsden is James Marsden, uh, and not Chris Pratt. So, um, yeah, cause Chris Pratt opens movies, right? Uh, James Marsden is like far and away the better actor far and away, like <laughs> a more desirable choice and, and crushes, in these two movies um he's the really that, like, good in everything honestly I, he's so i mean if you haven't uh, if you haven't watched jury duty dude he's so good in that show. my it's god horrible. like and the the sonic stuff in that like that like that moment and i love it so much because like, that it just the way that he reacts when when the dude i can't remember the guy's name but the 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 real person in jury duty yeah. for those who don't know jury duty was a show where everybody on the show basically was an actor um in a fake courtroom for a fake uh, uh, uh legal proceeding um except for one guy this one guy so it was kind of like the the reality show uh joe schmo if you yeah. if you remember that from back in the day it's a little bit like that but it was like it was kind of it's kind of like a um a scripted like parks and rec the office like that sort like 30 rock it's kind of in that if if it weren't for this this wrench that they throw in of like this guy that doesn't know that he's on a tv show that's what it would have been right but they throw in this guy and they got so lucky and they found like uh, just a wonderful human being and he and and james marsden become friends over the course of this but when they first <laughs> when they first meet they, he's got this great moment where he's like he's like oh yeah man i love I, I, I love you know the stuff that you've been in or whatever and he's like he's like we're like yeah you, have you seen sonic the hedgehog and he's like he's like no i heard it wasn't very good <laughs> he just says it he just says it in such a sincere way of like like oh yeah no i i, I don't know I, I heard it wasn't very good um and James Marsden's like, oh well, I don't, I don't know, but like he has like just these yeah. sort of defeated, like, well, I mean, like maybe you should check it out. I think it's pretty good. I, 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 I like. It. I think it's a pretty funny movie. And so then, like the next day, they come back, and he sits down. He's like, man, I got to apologize. I got to apologize. I watched Sonic the Hedgehog last night, <laughs> yeah. and it was really good. You didn't tell me Ben Schwartz was in it, and <laughs> and his like because it goes from like his reaction is like oh awesome that's that's great i'm glad that you loved it to yeah. oh, oh oh ben schwartz oh ben schwartz that's what and it's just it's so so good i uh, jury duty is fantastic james morrison is the best and he is also cyclops uh my my favorite x-man um uh, and you know the most in misunderstood x-man uh, as far as i'm concerned but i i yeah he he just like he carries these movies he carries the heart of of the 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 sonic movies especially in that second one um which you, you just watched it yesterday right yeah yeah so what i i've talked a bunch about it like, tell me like what what how do you feel about the sonic movies so the first one was i'm, I'm kind of like the jury duty guy where like i, I went into it <laughs> expecting it to be bad like yeah. because i was i was not impressed by anything in the trailers i was like okay this is gonna be another video game movie and then i watched it and i was pleasantly surprised very charming very fun um and i had started watching the second one because i liked the first one mm -hmm. and just kind of like fell off of it it's not that i didn't want to watch it it was just like oh i had other you know other stuff came up and whatever and you and i were talking about it i know it's like 
sacrilege that I had not seen it. So I was like, all right, all right. When I get back from Disney, I'll, I'll check it out. So it was really good. It was another one that like, I was expecting it to, I had, I had a certain expectation, but I didn't think it was going to be bad this time. I just thought, oh, it'll probably be as good as the first one. I like the second one a lot better. Um, and I think a big part of that is Knuckles, how he was just the, um, he played it so straight the whole time, but he's <laughs> just like really entertaining. And Knuckles was always my favorite as a kid too. So I kind of expected it to to kind of like that he would end up being my favorite. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, I really expected it to just be kind of, um, I guess video game movies are starting to get better, or at least video game adaptations. Like The Last of Us was incredible. Mm-hmm. And it's obviously the Super Mario Brothers movie was awesome. And I'm starting to now have a little bit of a, uh, I guess, a higher expectation of things, but still yeah. tapering them, if that makes sense. Um, but, like, I have more faith in that, like, oh, these adaptations can be good. Sonic 2 really surprised me, honestly, with with how good it actually was. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't really have a lot to say about it analytically, yeah. but it was just it was just really fun. Like, it was just... It was really entertaining in a way that wasn't the typical, like, ironic, oh, this is funny because it's stupid. Or, like, it was honestly genuinely entertaining. The acting was awesome. Performances were great. Uh, CGI, for the most part, there were a few, like, eh, that looks a little weird and video gamey. But you know what? It's a video game movie adaptation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Who cares? Um, Yeah. They're just... They're... They're better than they have any right to be. That, yeah, that's you know that's I mean? the that's the phrase that I use most often when oh, I talk really? about them. It's like, <laughs> okay. like for all intents and purposes, by all manner of ex- expectation, they should be awful. They should be squeakquels, right? Yeah. Like that's like yeah. you got. It's like okay, so Sonic the Hedgehog has this whole world and lore, and and the Sonic fans know you know like the, all this backstory stuff about sonic and then here they come with these live action movies with the first one and they're like well it's on earth so like, okay well so for they're like like you've already so now you've got a mark against you right off the bat right off the bat it's one of these ones they're like and he's like he's younger he's he's more of like a like a, a young teenager almost like a tween and it's mm-hmm. like okay so it's definitely aimed at little kids right like like so another mark against it um and this was all stuff like in the lead up to it right and it's like oh it's an it's it's a road trip movie it's a it's a human actor talking to a cg sonic um and then obviously we saw the first version of him (laughs) ugly sonic and uh and it was like oh my god no no you guys (laughs) know why because i've been pretty i've been a sonic fan since like the first grade right so um like sonic sonic is is one of like my my core identity modules mm. um like i like i i used to draw sonic so much i read the comic books and i, I like i i just Dude, I love the archie the comics were so awesome so good um and so i like my expectations were set very very low but it's a sonic movie and i'm gonna be there on day one because i'm a sonic diehard and it doesn't matter um and, you know, they had listened to the fans and they changed the design and he looks great, you know, in the final movie and all of that stuff. So we sat, we sat down for it, uh, Kara and I. This was like right, this was right before, because this is 2020, right? This is this is February of 2020. It's oh, yeah, wow. Pandemic okay. is right about to happen. It's the last movie that I saw in the theater um, before the pandemic. It was like, I think it was like Birds of Prey and then this. Um, we're sort of like the one two punch and it's like well, man great movies to go out on <laughs> i was like if this is the end of the world at least i got those two um i and it really washed the bad taste out of my mouth from rise of skywalker so <laughs> I, I i was like yeah star wars may have whiffed it on that last one but uh but then i ended up with this gem of a sonic movie that just like i remember like leaving it and and i uh, car and i actually left the movie and then went to a convention we went to fan expo uh, i i that, that same day and uh and then and i came home talked to crystal and w- was like 
that Sonic movie was so good. It was so good. We need to go see it. I and then and then the pandemic kind of happened and we never ended up going and seeing it. But then when it came out on digital, it's like bought it day one, watched it a bunch with the girls. And uh, yeah, it's like a staple in this house. Like like they they love it so much. So when the second one was coming out, I was like, okay, now my expectations are set high, right? Because we've got the tease of Tails at the end, right? Like the post credit scene. We know that Knuckles is coming. He's going to be voiced by Idris Elba, which, you know, isn't who we wanted. We wanted The Rock, but but we got idris and you know if you if you can't get the rock idris is a is an absolutely he was awesome uh, excellent substitute um and he and you're right like his performance what he brought to that character like the there's like a weird arch sincerity which is yeah. really yeah it's a it's a really really odd combination where it's like the character is totally absurd and the way that he talks is completely unnatural but it's so genuine it's so yeah. sincere that you're yeah. like this is really like this is knuckles um and and it's like when you get to the end of the movie and they're talking about desserts and he's like will there be grapes <laughs> yeah <laughs> the, ice the cream, memes yeah. and just all of it it's like the the care and attention that jeff fowler and and everybody else on these films have put into it um they they are sonic fans and they understand what makes a Sonic fan. Um, and so they, they delivered on that level. And um, in the best way, the, like they, they have made new Sonic fans, right? And that, to me, is like, like, I always say, it's like, we can do one-to-ones of things, you know? Like, oh, just take this thing and translate it to the screen. Or take this thing and turn it into a comic book. Or make a video game out of this thing. And it's like, but that's not fun what's fun is when you take the characters you take the vibe you take the spirit of it you make sure that that's intact and then you adapt it for the audience and for the the medium that you're going for and what they wanted to make was a series of family friendly movies that they that there aren't that many of anymore right like like there there are a lot of kids movies and then, like even like Pixar, I feel like has gotten very far away from making stuff that's a, that's not necessarily appropriate, but like that that that's that's geared towards kids. Like Elemental was a really great movie, and and the girls did like it, but I just it was very complex for for young kids, um, as opposed to like Toy Story, right? Mm. Toys come to life, right? It's so easy to explain elemental is like well um there are all these different elements and it's really about racism and uh you know like like so much of 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 what used to be geared at the family has now become aimed at adults appropriate for kids uh whereas i feel like it kind of needs to be the other way around and i think both sonic and mario achieved this via different routes yeah. right because the mario movie is also like absolutely a movie for kids yeah. that that has everything that we as fans wanted it to have. So like they did their own thing. They, they started from scratch. They created their own version of the world. Um, but they, but they also made sure that all the music cues were there. All of the, the in jokes were there, you know, memes and, and whatever. But then they also have Jack Black s- screaming his heart out, singing <laughs> about peach. Right. Um, and so I like both, we're just, we're so lucky to have both of these things like yeah they're both it, rad it, it's like i i people people always want to be like either or or you know like no you, that's stupid one's gotta go i hate that's those memes stupid. it's like one one's gotta go and it's like actually one doesn't like like we can we can actually like yeah. you can have a list of 10 things with like star wars and lord of the rings and blah 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 and all these things and one doesn't have to go like that is actually the beauty of the world that we live in is We're that allowed to enjoy more than one thing yeah you don't have to uh assign your identity to one (laughs) one franchise yeah really okay and listen this we're we are veterans of the console wars right like like we we grew up (laughs) in that era and i think that's probably the main reason why you know guys like you and i have the perspective that we have which is like what did we accomplish what did we accomplish by being like i don't play nintendo super nintendo games i have a sega genesis i'm a sonic guy mario sucks and then it's like you know five years later playing super mario world i'm like this game's 
amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like it's just it's so dumb. It's so dumb to either or like to to, to other things like that. Like just be thankful that we got that we get what we get when it comes to this stuff because the rest of the world is burning, right? Like everything else is pretty much awful. Um, <laughs> but but you know, like we get these Sonic movies, and you know, we did we we did our twenty twenty four rundown of all the movies that are coming out this year, and it like what a crazy killer year. Yeah, this is that not... we have one Marvel movie, MCU, I should say. We've got Madam Web as well. And we'll have a we'll, we'll I think we'll be I uh, uh, we'll be craving <laughs> later in the year, and then we and we'll close out with Venom three, but um, which are technically Marvel, but not really. You guys know what I mean. Um, but like no big M- MCU movie other than Deadpool, and no Star Wars still, right? Um, and yet, like the 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 slate for this year is looking so good, and. Honestly, Sonic bringing up Anchor in a in a killer relay race <laughs> between all of these awesome franchises. Like, we don't have a Star Wars this December, but we got Sonic on December twentieth. We got Sonic for Christmas, you guys. You guys, it's gonna be a Sonic Christmas <laughs> with Shadow the Hedgehog, voiced by Hayden Christensen. I mean, most of that is definitely true. Yeah, yeah. I really, really hope it's him. I it would really be awesome. hope it's him. God, at I, this point, I have anything to, else going to be disappointing. I have but. to quickly pivot though, and I because I have a question for you. Mm-hmm. Um, if the if the two answers are the same answer, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, but what would you say? A is your favorite video game adaptation, and then B, what would you say is objectively the most successful video game adaptation to? either a series or a film or mm-hmm. whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah. If it's the same answer. If they're both a Sonic movie, whatever, fine. No, they're not. They're not. Okay. Um, okay. I, I think I'll start, I'll start with the second question first. Okay. I think the most successful one at, at this point is the last of us. I mean, I, I think okay. I just in terms of, of scope, uh, reach and and um, and critical acclaim. I mean, it 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 really doesn't get much better than that. I think it's also a bit of a cheap answer. It's a bit of a cop out because The Last of Us as video games are already ninety percent of the way there. Yeah. Um. It's so it's so really cinematic those games. Yeah, it's really just a matter and like you know the 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 performances in the games are they have so much depth to them mm-hmm. that adapting that to an HBO series, I think was just, it's just a no brainer. Like it, it, um, that's not to say that what they did isn't, you know, an incredible accomplishment, but it just like, it's so right there. Yeah. Um, it was and they faithful. just, yeah. they just took what they had and they just, they just, they just, you know, emphasize certain aspects more, um, and de-emphasize certain aspects, uh, in the right way. So it is, it is, I think a pitch perfect adaptation. Yeah. Yeah, um, the the uh the Nick Offerman episode, like the Bill episode. Oh, so good, is, man. It's not just, you know, a great video game adaptation, like t- turning the story. Like it is one of the best hours of television that's yeah. been made. Like it's that was just unreal. It's, it's so so good. Um and it's standalone too. Like you can and, just yeah. watch you could have no knowledge whatsoever about anything. It's Even just the show a, itself. Yeah. You it's could just, just watch film. that episode and it tells an entire yeah. story in that episode. It was so good. Yeah, absolutely. So, so I, I think that that's, I think that that is objectively and truthfully the best. I think mm-hmm. it, in terms of like, like video game to video game movie, like that sort of an adaptation, I actually think that the Mario movie, I, I, it, it does it really, really, really well. It's okay. it. I think that they, they, they had the right approach doing it animated. Which, um, oh, okay. I thought we were talking about the nineties Mario movie. No, uh, doing it animated, <laughs> doing, doing. Yeah, adapting a story that doesn't exist really cuz mm-hmm. the Mario games don't have much of a story. Right. Yeah. Um so taking that world, um folding in Donkey Kong, folding in, you know, Mario Kart and all of that stuff. I I I I think that th- I think that they did a really really great job adapting that. Um better better than the Sonic movies because it is closer to what I would have wanted from Sonic than what we got from Sonic. I, I as much as I love what we've gotten from Sonic. Mm-hmm. I, 
yeah, that Mario movie is really, really good. I'm really excited for the sequel. Um, in terms of my favorite, my favorite is the Super Mario Brothers from the 90s, 1993. Oh, really? Uh-huh, That's awesome. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thousand percent. Thousand percent. I That movie is... I mean, that movie is a perfect 10, but it is... I, it's a perfect 10 in the most absurd way. Um, but yeah, if you know, if you know anything about like the story behind that, how that movie got made and uh, I, like the, the, the trials and tribulations of that <laughs> production, um, you know, like, uh, uh, I mean, Bob Hoskins arm is broken for most of it. I think <laughs> I, and they were like drunk most of the filming, right? The yeah. Two. Like it's a, it's a it was an absolute nightmare to film um and the end result is one of the wackiest concepts that you could imagine um but like damn it if everybody wasn't trying to make a movie you know like i and and just from a nostalgia perspective i mean like i didn't know any better i was eight (laughs) right (laughs) <laughs> the jump boots were awesome. Mm. I, I, you know, Bowser being a T Rex, Jurassic Park had just come out, right? Like, Ridiculous. like Yoshi too being a little yeah. velociraptor. Yeah, I. So for all of that movie's I, egregious and glaring faults, um, the things that it does well, I, I think it, I think it just does really, really well. So I, I actually love that movie unironically um mm-hmm. i i actually i actually do think it's a very good movie i think it's just a very misunderstood movie but i am also the one who defends batman and robin as one of the better batman movies because i just think people don't get it like it just you know it's not a sequel to batman returns or you know a batman forever it's it's a it's a movie like big scale version of 1966 Batman. So, you know, like, like in Batman forever, there's the joke where Robin goes, holy rusted metal Batman. And then he's yeah. like Val turns and looks at him. He's like, what? And he's like, he's like the, the metal, it's full of holes. Yeah, and then you're like, okay, fine, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> ha ha. Very funny. But then in, in Batman and Robin is like, what killed the dinosaurs? The ice age. Like that's oh, this dude. The ice puns are so good. <laughs> I, don't I care. maintain even when they're not even buns, they're yeah. good. I maintain that that performance for Mister Freeze is like the the best of all possible options, it, it, given <laughs> given the circumstances, right? Because he's making these terrible jokes the whole time. I've said this a million times on podcasts, but I don't think I've ever said it to you, Joe. So it's new for you. Every podcast is somebody's first podcast. It's fine. Sure. I, I, you have to remember who Mr. Freeze is. He's actually Dr. Victor Freeze, right? He's a nerd. He's a massive nerd. He's like, he's a huge nerd. <laughs> a huge nerd gets superpowers, becomes cra- a crazy supervillain, loses his mind. You think he's going to say smart stuff to Batman? You think you think he's not going to be like, I'm now an ice powered bad guy. Everything that I need to say has to be an ice pun. He's a misanthrope. He's a social outcast. Like he he's he like it makes sense. He's a nerd. He's a nerd. He just happens to have big muscles, guys. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and you know, ice ice powers. Um, yeah. But but we live in a world where we've got we have uh, uh the the batman animated series right so what's that episode? is it heart of ice uh, oh man i don't i don't remember the, the titles but yeah you know but everybody knows the episode that i'm talking yeah. about right yeah. like from the first season that exists that's a perfect mr freeze story that's perfect it's perfect as a matter of fact you're never gonna do better i don't think you're ever gonna do better than that story and like that doesn't mean that you shouldn't try. Somebody out there try and make a, a Batman story with with Mister Freeze better than that. But it's it's succinct. It's beautiful. It's uh, like it's meaningful. Um, it's it is it is everything that you want that to be. It is a perfect issue of a Batman comic turned into an animated show. And like it, just, everything about it is perfect. So like that exists. 
So let's like it's fine for Arnold Schwarzenegger to be Mr. Freeze and Batman and Robin, right? It's fine for Dennis Hopper to be Bowser. Cause eventually we get Jack Black as Bowser, right? Like mm-hmm. it like just I don't know, man. I think everybody needs to take a beat. They just need to breathe. They need to they need to to not be so precious with some of this stuff. Um and and recognize that that in most instances people out there making movies, making TV shows, making video games, comic books, whatever. Like everybody is trying their hardest. Mm. And the the common phrase is that it's a miracle that any of this gets made, right? Um it requires so many people working together in tandem. It is absolutely a miracle that movies happen in the first place every single one released is a miracle so i and and if you've ever worked on a film then you know the truth of that uh Mm. and it's so easy to it's so easy to dog on stuff and criticize um and i think like we should be critical we and 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 you and i are right like we 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 have our opinions and our things to say and and places where we think things could be better um book of boba fett is kind of always the thing that i go back to like (laughs) listen to us talk about that i love book of boba fett i like again unironically i love book of boba fett i love what they did with the character and the way that they transformed him and and all that i have big issues with the way they executed it in the show right um and 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 some of the story beats especially the stuff with the tuscans like the way that that ends right um and yet like like I don't have to be angry about it. I don't have to carry that around with me. There's a lot in the world to be angry about. It, it, Book of Boba Fett shouldn't be one of them. No. It shouldn't. It, you know, like there are better things to to save your anger for. Um, and when somebody's out there, when when Tamura Morrison is delivering at that level, we should just appreciate it and that we got it. You know, that like they could have just not brought Boba Fett back. <laughs> they could have just left him at the bottom of the Sarlacc. We could have just had the EU Boba nonsense that's in in those books, right, and comics. That they could have just left it there, but they didn't. They're like, no, we can bring Tem back. We can partner him up with Ming Na Wen, and you know, like give him a rancor. And <laughs> like, what else? I don't know, man. I just, I think people just look and gift horses and mouths all over the place with with stuff like that. It's like we have a we have a tv show where boba fett rides a rancor and fights a like a basically a trade federation robot right like i don't i people don't just need I, to be upset about stuff sometimes yeah but i don't yeah. know what people need from star wars because that's all i need most of the time is you know i so yeah um sonic 3 <laughs> i'm excited I, I I just I we just keep getting awesome stuff. These Godzilla movies, the new Planet of the Apes. Like I said, we talked about it in that 2024 movie rundown, right? Um, there's so much to be excited about this year that like, I don't just be excited. Just please be excited. Um, yeah, I I think I I think we're ready to jump into the ghostbusters i uh, you oh, you should I have, take i have been ready baby yeah. <laughs> i know you, you we've been like we, this is the thing so th- this trailer was what last monday right and then we yeah. recorded yeah. force perspectives and my mind was, was a bit not of, on star wars last last monday <laughs> yeah i i there was a bit of a conversation on monday of last last week of like should we swap like should we do should we do thunderquack now you know to talk about about frozen empire but we decided to just like stick with the plan and and uh, and the release schedule and so we did but i uh, i you and i have barely spoken to each other about this other than yeah. to just tell one another that we are both so excited yeah um but like you're the biggest ghostbusters fan that i know i i so i want to hear everything that you have to say about it first before i talk about it uh all right cool uh, well, first of all, I think important to point out, because surprisingly, a lot of people are not aware of this, two trailers were released last Monday. It was the, you know, the U.S. North American version yeah. and the international version. They're almost completely different trailers. Yeah. And I don't mean like, oh, they just swapped the clips around and like changed it. Like, no, 
the footage is almost entirely different in both trailers. So we got essentially two new trailers on Monday. And it was amazing. It was it was like opening a Christmas gift and finding your gift and another Christmas gift inside wrapped with your other Christmas gift. It was awesome. Um, so it's, it the, was it was like getting a PlayStation for your living room and a PlayStation for your bedroom yeah, for Christmas. Exactly. It's like, like, like you, yeah, like like you opened one box. It's these two boxes next to each other that are exactly the same size. You open one, you're like, you got me a PlayStation, and then you open the other one, and you're like, you got me two PlayStations. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like, need two, okay, but but I'm gonna use them both. I'll, I'll uh, take them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, I mean. So the the tone, I guess, of the the North American version is a little bit more lighthearted. It's not as scary as the other one. I I, I feel like yeah. there are a lot more. Um, they focus more on like the human threats. So Walter Peck is back, right? I I think he is. He's some type of authority, whether he's the new mayor or he's just I don't know some government official that oversees operations of the Ghostbusters, which has kind of been played with a lot in the lore over the years yeah. where the Ghostbusters are not just this independent company. They eventually become contracted either by the city or the government or, or whatever. And, but they have to answer to, you know, an authority higher than themselves in order to continue operating. Um, so there's something going on with that. So that's really fun that they're doing that. They showed a little bit of the, um, the technology going on, but, but not a ton, um, a little bit more of the, threat you know garaka the the new big bad and i I mean the thing that i think we all kind of knew about uh because of the empire magazine covers that released earlier but janine melnitz yeah finally suiting up oh my god uh and like not just not only she's suiting up her flight suit has her name on it which kind of suggests that this is not the first time that she's suited up which yeah i love i mean my my biggest letdown of afterlife was i really wanted sigourney weaver to come back in a flight suit and just like get revenge on gozer but that didn't happen i think if i'm not sure if she's in this film she could be like a surprise that they're holding off i'm hoping that she and rick moranis are going to show up in some capacity (laughs) yeah um but like just the fact that we're getting Janine in a flight suit, she's gonna have that cool little like arm uh, neutrona wand that's you yeah. know not quite the proton pack, but like the fact that she's here kicking butt. Like, dude, there's been countless articles about how this movie feels like an episode of the real Ghostbusters. I'm so here for it. Like, yeah. this is the movie that I wanted since 1989. Yeah. Like, I love Afterlife. I love what they did with it. But it wasn't the movie that I wanted. It was the mm-hmm. movie that I didn't realize I needed first. Yeah. Uh, but like this movie, oh my God, feels like the movie that I've waited my entire life for. This feels like true Ghostbusters 3. Even though I love the video game and still consider the video game as, as the third Ghostbusters film. Um, is no longer canon. And just, dude, this movie looks so fun. It looks so fun. Like... I understand why some people are saying like, oh, it's a lot of nostalgia bait again. They're bringing back Slimer and you can see the slime blower and like there's mm-hmm. all these like callbacks and the Ghostbusters 2 logo is in the background of one of the shots. Like, I don't care. Inject it into my veins, man. It looks yeah. so good. I love the firehouse. I love, I mean, you know this. I don't know if anyone who listens knows knows this, Mike, but like every excuse I get to go to Manhattan. It's an hour trip for me to just be in the presence of the firehouse. I'm just, yep. L- let's go. We're going. I don't care. Who cares? Let's go. And then just have like a drink of Christmas tree. I love the firehouse. So the fact that so much of this movie takes place at the firehouse and inside the firehouse, I'm just like, yes, I love this. It's, yeah. Like, I'm so pumped. It's back in New York. Oh my I, Like, I, I feel like I'm just rambling at this point with, with no focus. This looks so good. Okay, you go for it and and steer me in a direction that would be yeah. <laughs> like more uh, productive than me just kind of going yeah. unconscious right now. Um, I mean, I think I think that I think that you're right on the money though, right? And I think that your reaction is genuine. It is it is a very very real reaction because you're right. Like this is 
this is everything that Ghostbusters fans have been asking for. It's everything that the video games have tried to capture, that the comic books have tried to capture. Um, but we're but we're getting it for for real and for true, right? Mm-hmm. Like this is um I look at it and I go like this is extreme Ghostbusters in oh, 2024, God. right? Yeah, like I love that. That show's perfect 10 for me. I feel like I've said that before. Oh, that sure. show is a like perfect yeah. 10. Um and and there's an aspect here that I think that a lot of people discount when when we talk about um you know the 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 real Ghostbusters connection in terms of like the tone and and the the um sort of the the style of storytelling and that is that that series was really really well written especially like the first couple seasons are mm-hmm. really really well written episodes of television um j michael straczynski obviously being a a big part of that um who would go on to be you know one of the biggest names in comics in the the late 90s and early 2000s um for good reason because he's a fantastic writer but like he cut his teeth on real ghostbusters Mm. and there are some stories within uh the rgb that uh they that have like resonance they they stand the test of time um, and then there are other episodes that are just, you know, your standard uh, Saturday morning cartoon fare. But but like that's not that's also perfect. Right. Like that's exactly what that show needed to be. It was just such a perfect balance of that in a way that like He-Man, Ninja Turtles, G.I. Joe, Transformers, they were not right. Mm-hmm. All awesome in their own respects and in their own ways. But um but real Ghostbusters has a few episodes in there that you could just turn into a movie. Yeah. I mean, like Sam Hain, you could just oh, take man. that story and just make it a movie. Awesome. Um, yeah. Like, like I, I, uh, the boogeyman uh, yeah, going into the boogeyman's man. dimension, tying the proton packs together and, you know, like to, to blow up his dimension. Like the, like there's a film there. That's absolutely, that could be a film. Like there are some really, really great episodes of real ghostbusters. And I, and so when you and I talk about it and say that and use that as a touchstone, I think like, like we don't have to translate that to each other. We know what that means, right? This looks like the best of the best in the same way that the IDW comics, when they were at their best were doing the same thing they were they were taking what worked in the movies they were taking what worked in real ghostbusters and they were melding it together into um into a pretty perfect way to to tell a ghostbusters story um that's actually this, one of my favorite comic book series like of anything yeah. ever that idw like that long run of ghostbusters yeah I mean, IDW having that and Ninja Turtles side by side for years and then, you know, crossing them over in a way that like, I, I love that it's impactful to the turtle storyline, but is not (laughs) canon for the Ghostbusters one. But I, I, which then the, the turtles, the turtles get the flip on that because, because with the Power Rangers stuff, um, it goes the other way where it's like the. Actually, it, that's not entirely true because the the Power Rangers Turtle stuff it affects neither one of those ongoing series. It's its own universe um, that exists where where they both coexist in the same in the same world. Mm. Um, the turtles are in the Manhattan of that Angel Grove, right? Like like <laughs> the, it's a it's a it's an interesting way that they did it. But it's kind of like when they did the Turtles Batman crossover, where it's like it's a world where Batman where Gotham and New York exist together and uh and and yeah they go back and forth but um but yeah like like everything that we've seen so far and that international trailer i think just cranks it up a notch the the domestic trailer was i think what we were kind of it's more of what we were expecting from the teaser the international trailer went into the the um paranormal research division type stuff of like like uh, what Winston has been up to since Afterlife, uh, since, and and what we sort of got the hint at in the the post credit scene, right? Um, uh, or is it post credit? There's two, right? Because there's one with with him and Janine, and then there's which I think is just like the end of the movie, right? Uh, or like mid credits or sort. Yeah, no, like that's that. that's the end. Yeah, that's yeah, the end. and then and then the post credit is the the uh, the Bill and Sigourney 
thing. No, 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 all the way around. Is that the other way around? Okay. Yeah, all the way around. Um, Mid mid credit was Sigourney, and then the okay. ending was like that long sequence with Winston in the firehouse. I love that. I only zap the guys. I just. <laughs> <laughs> I love that it it shows that Peter has grown a lot, you know? It's, Um, it's like, I know a little bit about afterlife, like what it was going to be before the, you know, all the lockdowns happened and they ended up tweaking a lot of the film that, that scene with Sigourney was actually going to be in the movie because the, the next thing that was going to happen was Janine actually rings the doorbell and is there and starts explaining, Hey, they need us. We got to go. Janine was actually the one to gather everybody together. It wasn't okay. Ray. Yeah, that would have been. And, I, and Janine was supposed to be there at the end, but because yeah. they recut it, she wasn't there. That's uh, that's that's all. That's like heartbreaking because I feel like that that uh, that that would have worked really really well. But I don't I don't know if she suited up, but I know yeah, yeah. she was there because I I remember seeing photos. I don't think she was wearing the uniform. But I remember seeing set photos of them yeah. kind of like standing around and. Well, and even you know, even just her being the one to like gather the team and to, yeah. like, to take yeah. these stupid boys and be like, guys, exactly, guys, what are you doing? Like, because she's the one who stood by Egon, right? Mm-hmm. Like, was managing his finances and stuff like that. Um, there was whenever I, 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 I would love to go to the alternate universe where that film existed because I think if I'm remembering correctly, um, the original version of it was everyone in town. It might have been including Lucky, and that might have been why they changed it. Everyone in the town was actually a cult of Gozer worshippers. Okay. And everyone but Gruberson. And um, J.K. Simmons was Evo Shandor, but he was also the principal of mm. the school. And he didn't, we like, they didn't realize it, but he was actually, uh, Paul Rudd was the, a descendant of Shandor. Okay. So that was like the Paul Rudd connection to all of this stuff. That's interesting. That's funny. Yeah. I would yeah. love to see that movie in its entire. And you can, like I said, like there's little things that you can kind of. Um, you can see it. Yeah. Like are still there, especially like in the diner scene where uh, they're talking about like everything that's going on. If you look in the background, you actually notice people start to like slowly turn around and pay attention to what they're doing mm. and what they're saying. Um but I think they left that in there as like almost like a nod of the jail scene from Ghostbusters one, where all like the random people in jail with them were, yeah, somehow just paying attention and quietly like not really reacting. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I don't know. I would love to see the original cut of that movie, but mm. I still love the movie that we got. I I really like I really like the 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 way I think I think him being a, a Paul Rudd's character being a descendant of of Shandor would have been probably a little bit too much too yeah. uh, too too many coincidences right like right, too yeah. too much of like well the spanglers and then we've also got this it's like i i like the fact that he is there by happenstance right mm. that it's like serendipity that he's like well I, he was a huge he's us right like he's our yeah. he's our audience yeah. surrogate for 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 us for the adult ghostbuster fans that's like do you don't remember the 80s because this is this is the most interesting thing about Ghostbusters in the year 2024 for me. When I interact with with younger millennials and Gen Z, they don't have any familiarity with this franchise. Mm-hmm. They know that there's a movie, yeah. a movie. They don't really know about Ghostbusters 2. Um, and so when Afterlife came out, it was like, to to a lot of people, it was like, well, there's Ghostbusters and now there's Ghostbusters Afterlife. They don't even realize that there's Ghostbusters too. They certainly don't care that there's real Ghostbusters or extreme Ghostbusters or the comics or the video game or any of that stuff. So we kind of live in this in this world now where like to you and I, it is formative. It is part of our DNA, right? Like, I mean, like, yeah, see on the other side, right? Like, it's just like everything about it is baked into who we are. We talked about that on Perfect 10, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but there is a whole generation, maybe even two, that came after us that that has not grown up with this stuff. Now, interestingly, Afterlife has put Gen Alpha into a place where like they are now aware of Ghostbusters because Afterlife happened, right? So so Kara is a Ghostbusters fan because mm. I mean she's a Ghostbusters fan because I made her a Ghostbusters fan, but uh, by introducing her to it, right? It's a legacy situation, but 
but that's kind of that's what's happening right so it 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 we're kind of primed for a resurgence but at the same time um we exist in a in sort of this this limbo right now where like there's a lot of people who ask the question of like does ghostbusters really warrant more sequels and it's like absolutely it does there's <laughs> so much potential but if all you know is the first movie and afterlife or even the first like just the movies you don't have any familiarity with the rest of the yeah. franchise then that's a legitimate question because two out of the three movies deal with the same bad guy right so I think I think like the the choice to steer a little bit away from that and to make um to make Paul Rudd's character just a scientist um in the way that the guys were just scientists right mm-hmm. like I I I think actually that cuz I remember I don't remember who I was talking to but I remember having the conversation where somebody was like well Paul Rudd's just kind of like thrown in there there's not really an explanation and I'm like what are you ta- like watch the movie again yeah he's there because of the <laughs> seismic he's a he's a seismologist mm-hmm. but he's also just like a general science nerd right in like the vein of an 80s character who's like yeah okay that's his specialty but like he's just a big science nerd so he knows about all this quantum physics stuff and he knows you know like he can he can he can hang with the ghostbusters right but in the same way that peter could right like peter was not a hard scientist like like the others he was more of a social scientist (laughs) um (laughs) but he understood enough about what they were talking about in order to like like you know basically catch it uh, yeah you never studied yeah it's like oh, okay okay oh, that was so that that's a bad thing okay that's a bad thing good note <laughs> um i, yeah, I gotta but, i gotta quickly interject a quick anecdote from yeah. this this past year so the last time carl leclerc from over from wampa's lair came to visit in new york he and i have done quote-unquote ghostbusters tours in manhattan many times where it's really just he and I, and then whoever else is around, usually my fiance Tina joins us. Um, and a lot of times we just run around and hit select filming locations. But this time, uh, a, a friend of ours who is is the biggest Ghostbusters fan that I have ever met. You have to see this kid's collection. And then um, another friend of mine who just got his first flight suit and a proton pack and all that stuff. All of us cosplay, like, you know, or spare time as Ghostbusters, you know, at, at whatever events. But we were like, okay, we have a group of five people now. Mm-hmm. We're going to fully suit up, sans the packs, because it was a lot of running around Manhattan. And we're just going to hit all, like, the main film locations from the first film. And we're just going to take photos at each spot. And, I mean, like, I absolutely get why the 501st exists. I get why cosplayers exist, because, like... Go when you're a Ghostbuster and you're running around New York, everybody loves you. Yeah. Like it's immediately people smile, even if they think you're like a huge nerd. Immediately people smile and everybody's like super nice and their guard is down, and it's awesome. But one of the instances of just like bringing smiles to people's faces is at one point we're standing at uh, the crosswalk waiting for the light to change. We're over by uh, City Hall. So we're on our way back to the subway to hit the next spot. And there's a group of about 30 school kids with, I don't, like, I don't know, like three or four like adult chaperones with teachers and TAs and whatever. And one kid spots us and goes, oh, my God, it's the Ghostbusters. I love my dad showed me those movies. I love them. And about 12 of those kids started screaming ghostbusters oh my god the ghostbusters and we're so like (laughs) pumped you would think like we were the actual cast from the film yeah and you know funny enough they were filming uh this new movie there in that exact location where we were at the crosswalk um so i don't know maybe they were aware of that and thought we were part of the movie or whatever but like they knew who we were and were all really excited like overly excited and my friend my friend Nick just turns to us and smiles and just goes, but the kids love us. And it was like, it was like, this is one of the best moments of the entire trip of, of, of this thing. But like those young, young kids, they were yeah. probably like, I don't know, second grade, maybe first grade. Um, they knew who the Ghostbusters were and they were super pumped. And I don't know if, if like 
they just fed off of the energy of one kid who knew who the Ghostbusters were or whatever. But like that kid was super excited and immediately told us, my dad showed me those movies. I love the Ghostbusters. And yeah. like immediately it made us feel just as good as they felt. It was, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. awesome. Well, we talked about this on Perfect Ten, right? Uh, there's a there's a very specific magic to the Ghostbusters for mm. kids, and that is that like the world is scary and ghosts. The idea, you know, the dark, like you know, the 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 monster in your closet or under your bed or whatever, like these are things that are they're they're real to mm. kids. And but in the same respect, the Ghostbusters are real, right? Yeah. So if Ghosts can come out and scare me. It's okay because the Ghostbusters exist. The Ghostbusters mm. are there. Yeah. And I can be a Ghostbuster too because anybody can be a Ghostbuster. All you yeah. need is, you know, the tools and the talent. That's it, right? Like, <laughs> that's that's all it takes. So yeah. I, I, you don't have to have superpowers. You don't have to be rich. You don't have to be famous or even particularly good looking. You can be a social reject. You can be a weirdo. <laughs> You can be a nerd. You can be anybody. Um, And I think that was one of the things that Afterlife captured so well with the new characters, um, with with, uh, Phoebe in in particular, is just like for a new generation, um, just just, you know, showing them like like literally anybody can be a Ghostbuster, even a kid. Right. Um, and the fact that they're, they're carrying that through in the next one, that it's not, you know, some new crew of, you know, adult, you know, uh, uh, super handsome Chris Hemsworth, Ghostbusters, uh, whatever, like that it is, it's, it's just, I mean, in this one, it, it, it continues to sort of be a family affair sort of thing. Right. Which I, I really like about it. Um, but along with that, it's like we see we've already seen that, you know, like there's there's sort of like there's other characters coming in as well. Yeah. Um, and and that the Ghostbusters are expanding. Right. And that it's getting bigger. Um, it's it's got me really, really excited, not just for this movie, but for the future yeah, of, exactly. of the franchise and what what is possible, because I would just more than anything, I would like to see a TV series. Um, set somewhere that isn't New York, right? And mm-hmm. Dan Aykroyd had had said in an interview recently, maybe it was even in that Empire magazine, but uh, they filmed a lot of the movie in London, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, like I think all the studio stuff is basically in London. Yeah, they rebuilt the firehouse yeah. exterior and interior. And uh, and and they spent all that time there, and he was there going like there should be ghostbusters here. Like there's <laughs> like the number of haunted castles in Scotland, yeah. right? Like, you know, the, 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 the stories that you can get into, I, uh, I, uh, the ghost stories and paranormal and, you know, banshees and werewolves and, uh, just all of it. Right. Like, I mean, one of the best IDW series was ghostbusters international where mm-hmm. they literally just go around the world. I mean, I think it was mostly Europe, but, they're they're going to all of these places with these famous hauntings and just just outside of New York and it was awesome. It was such a good series. I think it was yeah. like eleven issues long, so each issue was like a different location. It was it was really rad. Yeah, so I like that. I I want to see I want to see Ghostbusters expand in that way, which was it gets us closer to the original vision to 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 Dan Aykroyd's original absolutely bananas <laughs> vision of a future where there are ghosts everywhere but there's also like a ghostbusters in every city right yeah. like and so like we were originally supposed to come in and it's like these ghostbusters are just some ghostbusters right uh not not the ghostbusters and i think where we're at right now with the legacy characters it's time for that next stage if if the franchise is gonna continue mm-hmm. of like like you know not that they need to step down as long as Dan Aykroyd and Ernie Hudson want to be in Ghostbusters movies. Uh, the, I will welcome them with wide open arms and a full heart, but um, I'm Bill Murray. I don't know how excited he is to be dragged back into this. He seems he, pretty happy in this. Movie. Like he seems like Peter Venkman in the little yeah. bit we've seen. So, you know yeah. what? I'm, I'm not too worried. And yeah, it's, totally. it's gotta be better than his. Uh, I don't know if you, if you read, um oh what is that book called uh it's it's the it's the it's a recent ghostbusters novel 
I think it's like a convenient parallel dimension where it just kind of like goes into all the behind the scenes for basically every iteration of Ghostbusters. So the films, real Ghostbusters, extreme mm-hmm. Ghostbusters, and um, the video game. In the video game, he was not very pleasant to work with. Um, so if you ever get a chance to read that, I, I encourage you to, you know, not because I want to badmouth Bill Murray, but like, it's so clear when he's just not passionate, when he's just yeah. there for, for the paycheck. Right. Yeah. Um, he had that little phase there where he was like, he, he was going around telling everybody like, this is the best. I, you get paid. You show up for like a day, you record your lines and yeah. then you're done. It's like when he did Garfield and he did the yeah. video game and, and all that. Like there was a minute there where Bill Murray was like, voice acting is, is so much better than real acting. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I, I, so I, I just I I just want, I mean I just always want more Ghostbusters. I'm just selfish yeah. in that way, right? I want yeah. an animated no, series. Too, I want animated movies. I want live action movies. And well, we're getting a Netflix show, right? And... Like that's still coming. They announced There's, it a few years yeah, ago. Yeah, they they've been they've been saying. Well, there was supposed to be an animated movie at, for a minute there, right? That, and then I don't know what's happened with that, but yeah, it, it I don't know. I, well, the day yeah, the day they announced this movie they didn't yeah not the title but they announced that we're working on the sequel i think it was actually ghostbusters day two years ago yeah. they announced this movie and they also announced the netflix show so it's not like it's been so long that we need to be worried about the netflix series mm. um but i i mean i'm hoping that this year maybe ghostbusters day we finally get like a teaser trailer or something because this movie will have come and gone by that point yeah I sorry. I was just looking up to see if there's anything about no, yeah. Uh, new Ghostbusters animated series coming to Netflix from the Afterlife team. Yeah. So, yeah. I I don't know. I'm and the thing with animated stuff is that you it gets announced and then you hear nothing and then it's out. <laughs> yeah. Um. So who knows when that's coming? But but I I obviously they're gonna focus on the movie first. So. I, but I like that we're we're establishing a world in which you know there can be Ghostbusters all over the place, and that there's a. Mm. Uh, I'm interested to find out how they are kind of justifying uh, the need for, for like the continued existence of the Ghostbusters, because uh, one of the things that the movie did really well, but that it's kind of always like the first movie, but it's kind of always been the bane of the Ghostbusters franchise existence is the movie establishes exactly why this is happening. Why yeah. now, why the Ghostbusters yeah. can become a thing in that moment and why it hasn't happened before, but then they deal with it and it becomes a thing of like, well, now I guess it can't happen anymore. Yeah. Right. And then the we second movie comes along. Well. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 the second movie reinforces it. That's the, like, yeah. that's the real problem. Cause yeah. You could have easily the end of the first movie is like the like the final frames, right? Are Slimer screaming towards the screen. So like that is an implication of like, well, there are still ghosts out there, right? Like the mm-hmm. Ghostbusters still could could be out there doing their thing. But but the idea that that the coming of Gozer is a a, a virgins right like it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a very specific moment in time and because of it all of this paranormal energy is being drummed up and so the ghosts are able to manifest when before there were rumors about the 13th floor now he's there like and he's affecting yeah. things and we've had to shut everything down right um and that's what changed. That's that's why all of a sudden now the librarian ghost is the librarian ghost and not just a thing that people have seen once in a while, but is a mm-hmm. thing that can actually affect the real world. Um, and, and, you know, things can start crossing over sort of thing. The, the, you could have easily followed up in another movie of like, yeah, we've been busy ever since because, you know, when we when we shut the door when we when we you know uh cross the streams we may have stopped gozer from being able to come through but we opened a we opened other doors right like you you can really easily just say that like the events of ghostbusters created a world in which ghosts persist right where there's just it's constantly leaking now through these small cracks so it's never on the scale of gozer but it's always there's always something instead right. we come back and they're like we haven't worked in 
two years, <laughs> right? Like well, there are no ghosts anymore. We're out of business. We just do birthday parties um, until Vico and, you know, starts, starts his river of slime. And then it happens again because the slime creates a scenario in which the ghosts can manifest again. Right. Um, so they've kind they kind of have put themselves into this world, this, this, catch 22 of like in order to have a ghostbusters story you have to justify how the ghosts are manifesting right where they're coming from um so i'm really i'm really hopeful that by the end of this movie that by the end of frozen empire we get a bit of an explanation not i not that i need an explanation but that just i just want the world to establish a continued need for the ghostbusters because I have a continued need for the ghostbusters. So, well, I mean, the way, the way I look at it is that, you know, there was the Gozerian threat. There was the, the slime threat because yeah. as, as a kid, I used to think, Oh, Vigo is just really strong and the slime is his, but like, you know, the older I got, I realized, Oh no, the slime, uh, because of the psycho etheric nature or whatever it was, though, all the negative emotions were, kind of charging the slime and therefore making all of the ghosts manifest, including Vigo, who was maybe the strongest at the time, but then mm-hmm. got even stronger because of the slime. Um, I, I think that is enough for me that they're already establishing, Oh, there are going to be events that just keep causing stuff like yeah. this to happen. That's, I don't need anything more than that. Like uh, that's satisfying enough that, Oh, okay. There's always going to be, another threat um yeah i just, I, I, I get what you're saying like in order yeah. for them to stay in business they can't just go from they can't just wait for threat to threat it, yeah. there needs to be like some kind of explanation how they stay in business like between those threats um but i don't need it i don't, I don't care about that i would just love like it's a it's a it's like a single line from ray at some point in the new movie where he just goes like after like like after we dealt with gozer the first time we thought you know that's it like we closed the door mm. and but then vigo happened and then it, and then he can like name like a handful of other things that we don't know about right like they mm. can they can establish a little bit of like well there was this thing and that thing that happened in between but they were smaller so there's no movie right like but and and then just to simply say like but after like gozer's last incursion something so, like something has changed like the mm-hmm. there there's these things are happening more frequently uh, and and you know like the 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 risk of gozer scale events is now much more likely um well across the okay. planet but like especially here because of because Here, of here's why Manhattan, i think we you know? can't do that though because if you remember yeah. the um uh the sacrificial chamber that they mm-hmm. were in they had all those dates of those like giant uh, uh, events that oh, yeah, went yeah. on the next event after 2021 is like 2140 or something like that it's like another 100 years plus yeah, yeah, yeah. from now so even that would kind of be like contradictory on their own lore sure um i i think well i mean like that's we're talking about you know like the world ending events right like i i i I mean and they've gotten around it with this new one because it's it's tied to an artifact right so it's right you know this ghost is is obviously contained inside this orb and once that's unleashed it's going to then set into into motion the events of the movie right Mm, but um I, I I think that you could just play with it that like like you know there's a there's always kind of been an implication of like like the spirit world and the and the real world are like they they're they're parallel to each other they kind of occupy the same space but but we don't necessarily see it all the time except when these when these things happen right so like that's what has allowed the ghosts to kind of manifest but but to just say that like that like you know because things have happened like because of the things that have happened and and um i think that they could get away with it by just going like because we ignored it like that like that's one of the biggest things it's like had we listened to egon when he first said something maybe we could have prevented Mm -hmm 
the situation as it is now, but like th- there, there are cracks in the dam sort of thing. And, and so like, it's, even though it's not a, like we stopped the flood there, there's it's, there are still leaks that are getting through. And so mm-hmm. there are ghosts and like, they're showing up not just here, but other places. And so, you know, like, and that's where you can have Winston being like, and that's why we need this now. Like that's, that's why I've taken my money and I've invested in this because it's not just a, this isn't about making money. This is the world needs the ghostbusters like that. Like if the line, the world needs the ghostbusters isn't somewhere in this movie, I'll be very shocked. I hold on one second. I think he says something like that in the international trailer. Doesn't he? Or was it the... Does he? Am I, am I, am I already he's, like... He's being interviewed in front of the firehouse and there's like yeah, a big yeah. crowd and Walter Peck is there and the rest of the Ghostbusters are there. Hold on, let me try to quickly find that. I feel like there's something very similar to that. Very similar, yeah. Um, let me scrub through. Yeah, like was, uh, maybe, I'm just, maybe I'm just thinking that I'm smart and came up with it myself, <laughs> but it's just in the trailer. But I... Yeah, like, I, like that, that, sort of, that sort of thing, I think. Like where they've set Winston up, I think like, it's just natural for him to be, he's got to be like, he's, he's the tech mogul. That's like, you know, talking about, you know, that's going to be the, the evangelist for the ghostbusters, obviously. Mm -hmm. Right. But, but, but he's also like, like the thing about Winston and this is anytime you hear Ernie Hudson talk about this character, um, he talks about Winston this way. Winston is, is like, the soul of the ghostbusters right Mm. so um if anybody is going to be the guy that's like that says you know the world needs the ghostbusters it's gonna be him you know uh it's just natural did did you find it yet (laughs) okay so i i was wrong it's uh he it says okay it says all over new york city ghost attacks are on the rise yeah. And he's being interviewed by a film crew. I don't know why I thought he said the world needs the Ghostbusters. Maybe he says something in the post credits of Afterlife that's similar. I don't remember. I, he, I, I might be. I might just be yeah. misremembering this. I think that Janine says something along those lines, right? Like that. Yeah. That sh- that because she's going to him and saying to him, like, "Hey, you've got all this money. Like, like it, it's time, sort of thing." Mm. Um, which is the setup for for the world that the new movie exists in. But By yeah. the way, that scene was also part of Janine going, like, mm. and getting the guys. I think she was going to appeal to Winston. Yeah, and I, Winston's basically like, "Yeah, I'm gonna fly the guys out now. We're, we're gonna we're gonna yeah. get them." I love I love so much where they've put that character specifically. Um, that you know, like like the Ghostbusters fall apart and he takes what he has from that time they've all they've like squandered it right like yeah. like like ray opened the bookstore and is just you know a curmudgeon in the bookstore um peter has obviously just you know gone on to whatever the next grift is i i whether it's a tv show or a book or whatever right and, and you know peter will always be fine but i i always always on the cusp of of being a success i think um he's he's a perpetual I, 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 I underachiever. <laughs> That's why I love him so much. <laughs> but I, but Winston, you know, like if there's a steady paycheck in it, I'll believe anything you say. Like that's the attitude that, that, you know, you turn around, you take the money that you made as a ghostbuster that you, you were investing when the other guys were, were uh, being dumb with their money. And, uh, and then you, and you turn around and you, and you turn it into a, you know, massive business he's a he's a millionaire billionaire whatever um enough to bankroll the ghostbusters in perpetuity right (laughs) like i love that because because of the nature of like the behind the scenes of that character and sort of you know the the story um of of sort of how like just the short shrift that that ernie hudson specifically got right um in signing on and then you know i i because that role for those who don't know we always have to remember that we're not talking just to hard, <laughs> hardcore, right. diehard Ghostbusters fans. But for those who don't know, originally that role was Eddie Murphy, mm-hmm. and he was in the whole movie. He was right. there yeah. with the guys from the beginning. But um, but Eddie dropped out for whatever reason. I think Beverly Hills Cop. But I so he was off doing his own thing, and then 
uh, they started rewriting the character. And when Ernie Hudson signed on for the movie, the role was bigger. And then when he showed up and got the script, it was like, he doesn't show up until like an hour in, right? Like, <laughs> and he, and he's got like 10 lines sort of thing. And like the, the series would go on to make Winston a core member in a, in a way that, that the movie kind of let that character down a little bit. Right. But, um, uh, and, and, you know, he's, he, he, he serves his role on the team. Um, but, but yeah, they, like he, he really got kind of, kind of, um, uh, s- not really screwed over cause he's still one of the ghostbusters, but he's not on the poster for the first yeah. movie. I, I don't think he was fairly represented yeah. in general. Yeah. Um, so having, having the come up, come up of, of decades later, you know, the other ghostbusters, uh, you know, they're fine. They're surviving, but. Well, maybe not all of them because Egon doesn't, but, um, you know, like everything's kind of falling apart, but from those ashes, he's risen and is this, this other thing entirely, right? Like he's, he's been the most successful. I think that's such a great turn of that story. Mm. And, and I think it's going to be really fun to play with that, with this world now, you know? Um, in in our era, our current era of franchises and and storytelling on the scale that that we do it now, right? Like uh, Sony really really wants Ghostbusters to be their MCU, right? Um, <laughs> I I and and so like that. I mean, like they keep trying with these Sony Marvel movies as well, but. Yeah to have their own spider they keep coming up with new acronyms for their you know sony spider-man marvel universe or whatever um i can't remember what the latest one is but with the madam web promotion they've got some other term that they're using now i i and they're trying so hard to make it its own mcu but i but ghostbusters i think is really where the opportunity lies with that yeah. like ghostbusters yeah. is, is the franchise that they can turn into this by having a movies and tv shows cartoon live action whatever um comic books video games like just just do it all it's the concept is just so perfect for an evergreen property right like there's just there's never there's never a a a, a lack of ghost stories People want this kind of stuff. That something that lives in the in the zone between comedy and horror. That you know we can like look at the things that scare us and then laugh at them, mm-hmm. right? Like that's, I think that's that's it's it's why Ghostbusters has persisted despite um, a lot of efforts to to bury it in the ground. Um, it's uh, it just keeps coming back because I don't know, man. There's something about a proton pack. There's something about there's something about the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man, the Ecto One, all of it. the The iconography of it is so strong, and it, the thematic quality of it is so strong. I I think that's why Extreme Ghostbusters holds up as well as it does too, because it doesn't just rely on those those legacy characters, right? Like mm-hmm. it's the the bulk of that show is not Egon. Like yeah, Egon is there; he's the mentor character. Janine is there, and she like has her like great supporting moments and Slimer is there with his supporting moments, but like it's the new team. Like the, mm-hmm. the entire show is really on the shoulders of the new team. And like, they're so well written that you, you don't miss the, the OGs, right? You're just, if it's well written yeah, and it's like you said, it's scary. It's funny. The technology is there. It's the iconography of ghostbusters is there. Like, you're going to tell great stories. It's, it's going to be awesome. Like, of course, there were a few stinkers here and there. But, like, in a series that's 40 episodes, having, like, I don't know, four meh episodes is, I would yeah. say, pretty good. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I agree 100%. I just want more Ghostbusters. Like, do it well. Let people who love Ghostbusters and understand Ghostbusters create it yeah. the way you have been the last two films. Like, do it, man. I'm, I'm here. I'm here yep. for the long haul. Absolutely. Cool. Well, you know, I think we did it. I think, <laughs> I, I, I think, I think we've, we've managed to, to entertain and talk about Ghostbusters and Sonic. And, I have one uh, question for you though. Yeah. Involving Ghostbusters. Okay. I, I think it was the international trailer. 
um, library ghost. How do you feel about the implication that it took this long for them to actually do something about the library ghost? I, uh, I mean, okay. So, so there are two ways that, that I can answer that. There are like two, two instances where I can answer that. It's entirely possible that they went, they developed the tech and they eventually went back to the library and caught the ghost, right? Like mm-hmm. we just didn't see it. It's part of the montage, right? When they're cleaning up the town. I, uh, but the end of that movie is the containment unit explodes ah, and all the ghosts get out. I right? did not put that together. And then, okay. In this movie, in I think it's in the international trailer as well. The containment unit is failing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um. They. Rumbling. They. Sorry. What's the name of the new ghost? The, Which ghost? The the, the, the big like one. New, the, oh, uh, the, the big bad. Garaka. Okay. Um. The implication from the international trailer is that Garaka senses the containment unit and is like targets the ghostbusters mm. the fire hall to to let all of the ghosts out um it could be her empire, empire yeah exactly ghosts. okay yeah all so right. um i i think this is my prediction for it i think that the containment unit which was rebuilt after the events of the first ghostbusters right but uh, the the containment unit will be destroyed in this movie beyond repair and they will rebuild it and it will be the containment unit from RGB. It'll be the oh, like the, the like full gigantic. like two story tall yeah, awesome. containment unit and that'll be like the end of the movie. Okay. Is that it's like everything else will have happened and it's like and you know like the 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 fire hall will have been like closed for a while while they you know cuz they got to like fix it after mm-hmm. after the 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 events of the movie or whatever, right? And it's like I could see it being like either the mid credit or the post credit scene where it's like is like you know they're kind of like walking up to the door or walking down those steps you know and we're expecting that they're gonna like kind of turn around the corner and and we're gonna see the the little containment unit built into the brick wall and it's gonna be like well after what happened uh, it left a pretty big hole <laughs> <laughs> so we were able to we were able to upgrade the containment unit so that this can't happen again basically like, awesome. like oh, that would be so cool to have to have ray like oh, explaining it's like it's like Look, look, it happens once that's, you know, that's on Gozer. It happens twice. That's on us. <laughs> right. Um, I, yeah. So like we, we had, to, we had to beef up security around, around the containment unit. And oh, I love uh, that. yeah, so, so we put in a few upgrades and then they like turn on the lights and you get the like, jong, jong, jong of the lights yeah. turning on. And then it's just this huge room. Then, hopefully the dramatic lights in the floor too. I love that. Yeah. That like grating floor. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's awesome. gotta be right. If you're going to do awesome. it like, like you have to recreate yeah. the the basement from from real Ghostbusters, which mm-hmm. made no sense because it was like twice the size of the firehouse. But I, uh, but yeah, and then and then see because then we can have stories where they go inside the containment unit. You guys, let's go! I'm here for it. Those are some favorite, of my favorite Extreme Ghostbusters episodes. I, I love it every time they got. They, it's awesome. Yeah. Every time they got to go inside the containment unit, whether it's you know the originals or what, I just I love it. It's such a great concept of like it's bigger on the inside sort of thing Mm. you know um yeah awesome well we actually don't have that long to wait we are next month oh my god i'm so excited we are in february this is when i hate the fact that you are on the other side of the continent that know, like man. you you are in a completely different place for me because I would love to see this movie alongside you, but um, we will have to just you know see it. We'll both be seeing it as soon as is humanly possible. Mm-hmm. Um, and do we know uh, when tickets go on sale? No, I got to imagine okay. soon. I got to imagine I so. soon. I was I was frantically checking all day last Monday. Yeah, yeah sometimes yeah. you know that trailer drops and the tickets yeah. go on sale the same day, but nothing yet. Totally. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we'll be there day one and I, and, and then, you know, we'll be back after the, after that to, uh, to, to talk to you guys about it. I'm sure it's, this is one of those things. The, 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 the more of this we do, Joe, the more it's like, man, we need, we need more like ways to cover things. I know. And, uh, so I don't know. Thunder quack reviewed might have to make a might have to make a comeback because it's not quite, okay. this isn't quite perfect 10 territory, right? Like I don't want to be doing 
so much modern stuff on perfect 10 it's more mm. about stuff that ten- stands the test of time but i uh, i know that we're gonna need to talk at length about frozen empire after yeah, we see I'm it in. so i uh, stay tuned obviously uh for that stay tuned to thunder quack in general because i alongside all the patreon stuff that i've talked about there's some other things that i'm working on that that um that could be coming online in the next couple of weeks um so you know stay tuned stay tuned we got some, i got some surprises for this month it's not just the things that that we've revealed there are there are some surprises up my sleeve um for for thunder quack uh, I, going into the future um some things that i've been wanting to do for a while and so i yeah um but that's it for this episode uh obviously i i head over to patreon.com slash thunderquack and and help us out over there help us hit some of those goals and i i thank you to everybody who does support us on patreon already to everybody who's getting this episode early they're they're listening to it you know on the monday night uh or you know tuesday morning probably but i i you guys are awesome you guys are the best and everybody who's been considering it now's the time now's the best time i think to to jump in um and i uh, you know join the community join us on our discord thunderquack.com slash discord as well um we're starting up a, a thunderquack book club um which anybody can be a part of. You just have to, to um, come join us on the discord for that. I, uh, but patrons will be invited to uh, uh, buy monthly. Um, is it bi month? It's semi monthly is twice a month. Bi monthly is every other month, right? You are um, asking the wrong guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it's bi monthly. So every other month we're gonna do. We'll we'll come back. You know, like from one of those books that 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 we're gonna put on a list. We're gonna put together together a schedule. We're just kind of gathering some some books right now, um, from from the listeners. And uh, this was all Carl's idea, actually. Carl, Carl from Wampus Lighter. He he wanted to. I mean, he wanted to just do a Star Wars book club, and I was like, we got to open it wider than that. Uh, so we'll do a bunch of Star Wars books, no doubt. But but um, I also you know, I want to do Jurassic Park uh, uh, and other stuff. So uh, yeah, it's going to be a fun thing that we do, and that'll be uh, uh, not exclusive to patrons, but enhanced uh, if you have a, a Thunderquack membership through Patreon. Um, and you can join us in there and talk about some cool books. I uh, talk about all sorts of stuff. I mean, the community is awesome. It's so great. And our discord is so great. So I, uh, so come hang out with us there. I, uh, you know, listen, leave your rating and review on your podcast app of choice. Uh, and uh, most importantly, tell a friend like, Oh, you got a ghostbusters fan. Tell them to listen to this episode. Let them know that Joe and I are huge, massive Ghostbusters nerds. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you to everybody for listening. Thank you to everybody for supporting us. And uh, and we'll be back in four weeks with another episode of Thundercrack. But also we'll be back next week with the bonus episode where we rank the Pokemon. 151 Pokemon. I don't know how long the episode is <laughs> going to be, but it's going to take us a minute. So About three uh, weeks long. Yeah. <laughs> um, awesome. Uh, thank you, Joe. Uh, you got anything, you, anything that anybody needs to know about? You got any, any, anything to plug? Uh, not at this moment, but very okay. soon, but thank okay. you for it. Very soon. Okay. <laughs> yeah. There's a tease. Uh, awesome. Thank you guys for listening and we will catch you on the next episode.